Attention Northwest Arkansas businesses and talent seekers. Introducing Onboard NWA.com, your hyperlocal job board crafted for our unique community. Struggling to find the perfect match for your job openings? Onboard NWA simplifies the hiring process, connecting you with the region's top talent through tailored talent matching solutions. Whether you're an employer seeking expertise or a professional looking for your next opportunity, Onboard NWA is here for you. Discover more at onboardnwa.com and let's build the future of Northwest Arkansas together. It's time for another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas, the podcast covering the intersection of business, culture, entrepreneurship, and life in general here in the Ozarks. Whether you are considering a move to this area or trying to learn more about the place you call home, we've got something special for you. Here's our host, Randy Wilburn. Hey folks, and welcome to another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. I'm your host, Randy Wilburn. I'm excited to be with you today. I've got, he's not my good friend yet, but I'm working on that. But uh, Bjorn Simmons is one of the founders of Venture Noir, and I'm going to let him explain exactly what he does. But I wanted to, before I let I let Bjorn talk, I wanted to just say that, you know, one of the things that I have found in, in spending time doing this podcast, 70 plus episodes in, the, in just in the last year alone, the, you know, there is so much about Northwest Arkansas that even a lot of us that have been here for a while don't even know about. And one of the things that I really was able to tap into as an African American is that, you know, there is, you know, of course, we have a lot of African Americans that come and work at the big three, Walmart, Tyson, J.B. Hunt. But there's also a lot of a lot of African Americans that go to the University of Arkansas that matriculate through, graduate, and then stay here. And I think it's it's uh, it's interesting to see the um, trajectory of these individuals that choose to stay here in Northwest Arkansas, which, as I always say, is a great place to live, a great place to raise your kids. But uh, I just thought it would be really cool to b- bring Bjorn on and talk a little bit about what he is doing here. He is a U of A graduate. So without further ado, Bjorn Simmons, how are you doing today? Hey, man, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm excited, excited, excited to have you on the show. Well, well, one thing that we do on the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast is we always have people tell their superhero origin story because we all have <laughs> one. But I'd love for, I'd love for you to give uh, our audience a cliff note version of who Bjorn Simmons is and how you got here to where you are today. And I'll talk a little bit later about how we connected, which I think is interesting as well. But I'd love for you just to share with our audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah. I love that superhero origin story. I was a, a superhero kid, comic book kid. And so, uh, I mean, <laughs> my favorite it. movie is still The Avengers, right? Wakanda um, Forever. Wakanda Forever, absolutely. <laughs> um, so I, I guess, you know, to sum it up, I, I've always worked to be a part of The Avengers, right? Um, in, in that sense. And originally from Arkansas, born and raised in Arkansas. My dad lived in Michigan, though, when he moved, I was like five. And so I spent every other year going between Arkansas and Michigan. So I got to see two completely different lifestyles. And I, I think they kind of added to my welcomeness and in, in to, to different communities and different environments, but also exposed me to the growth that comes from experience and just by actually going to other places. And so graduated from University of Arkansas in 2011, moved out to Atlanta, Georgia immediately I'm from Northwest Arkansas. I enjoyed my experience in college, but I was so ready to leave that place and just really go jump out into the world. I think Northwest Arkansas at that time seemed like a bubble. I think it's still a bubble in a lot of ways, but that time was definitely a bubble. I mean, it wasn't real life. And so I wanted to go jump into real life and moved out to Atlanta, the Mecca, Black success, you know, culture at that time. And he worked in politics. I was bit by the Obama bug. And so I worked for Stacey Abrams, who recently ran for governor, hopefully becomes a VP in this upcoming election. But I worked for her. and. A representative who was then the Democratic whip, uh, Carolyn Hughley, on their team for about four years on a number of roles from intern to chief of staff to field director to campaign director. And so I was really all over politics at that time. I had aspirations to really go to the White House and, you know, potentially work for Obama one day. 
but I, at the same time, I was always entrepreneurial and mm-hmm. creating my own pathway. So even in college, I started my own kind of marketing agency and started doing events and promoting and doing things outside of my curriculum. I majored in marketing, but marketing at that time was highly focused on retail marketing. And I really wanted to get into more so the, uh, the uh, creative marketing at the creative aspects of marketing. So I kind of created my own agency, started doing some work, events, things like that, soliciting sponsors. And that side hustle gave me an opportunity to go to South by Southwest in 2014, where I was working with a startup to do a projection bomb downtown Austin, Texas. But immediately getting off the plane, this feeling overtook me of this world of entrepreneurship and innovation, right? South by Southwest really was uh, created an atmosphere that welcomed entrepreneurs, corporations, culture by way of music, talent, film in a professional setting where you could work and play. And, and I knew this is the world that I want to be in. And so less than six months later, I quit my job in politics and jumped into my first startup. And I mean, literally on the road to Syracuse, uh, New York, driving up, I quit my job and, ju- and, and committed to an incubator program uh, where we launched my first startup, Wiser. And so that startup journey has led me to where I am now, you know, going from a startup a founder to raising capital to working with um, big corporations all over the world to becoming an ecosystem builder and going inside of a, v- a venture fund. I uh, went to work for Centrifuge in Cincinnati, where I was in you know, the, uh, the community catalyst, and my job was to build the ecosystem and connect with all the programs and entrepreneurs. And so, all of that work uh, has brought me back home to Northwest Arkansas <laughs> for the launch of Venture Noir. And through that, all of my experiences from being a uh, um, political enthusiast, community activist, entrepreneur, a techie, and then an ecosystem builder has kind of made me now commit to building inclusive entrepreneurial ecosystems for up and growing uh, regions like Northwest Arkansas. And so my job and the focus for launching Venture Noir was to really create a pathway for underserved entrepreneurs, primarily people of color, to take advantage of resources and uh, growth opportunities that are unique to the region. Yeah. So if I was a if I was and I'm just going to put you on the spot here, but if I was a junior African-American junior at the U of A with a really great business idea, how would you sell me on staying here after graduation? How would you (laughs) take me under your wing? What would you say to me? Yeah, uh, I think there is a um, so when you look at the life entrepreneurial cycle. Right. So I think what the startup community has done has really put into practice the entrepreneurial journey, right? And steps to take at each in each path. And so from ideation all the way to exit, here are things that you should do. How I would convince a student at the University of Arkansas to stay in the region is to one, make sure you're utilizing all the resources that are there at the institution to get your company off the ground. And that's from intellectual property, solidifying that, identifying the team, as well as mentors and advisors to support you along your growth. Soliciting and uh, resources for, um, as far as grants and opportunities to fund your startup and get as much off the ground as possible before you even go to market. Make sure you're building your business from a solid foundation right there in, in within the confines of the institution. And then second, utilize the e- uh, entrepreneurial support organizations that are there in the region. There are a number of them um, outside of, you know, just mentioned the wire, but Startup Junkies there. The chambers are really active in the, in the community. Endeavor plug and plays now in the region and there are and, and others that are committed to the growth and success of entrepreneurs. And so connect with them, join the entrepreneur support organizations, join the entrepreneur community, because I, what I did learn along my journey is that the community really, really, really supports the growth and success of entrepreneurs. And sometimes that's undermined, but it's exciting to see the Northwest Arkansas actually has a community that you can join and be a part of. And so there is a pathway to entrepreneurial success. You don't have to just go work for Walmart in order to be successful or one of the big corporations in order to be successful in the region. Yeah, absolutely. Not that there's anything wrong with going to work at Walmart because you can provide insight and be, you know, be a, an important part of the process from inside the system, i.e. like a Walmart or a Tyson or a JB Hunt. And then you can also do it externally. And so you've, and you've had a chance to kind of do both. So I Absolutely. think that, that and I think that benefits people well. Tell me a little bit about how this big pitch competition came about. I only found out about it late and I wish I had really had a chance to to put my ducks in a row and, and participate. Somebody sent me a text the night that it was due and I got the application. By the time I read their email, it was like 1130 at night. And I was like, oh, 
rushing to to fill out my application and and do it. And I said, you know, I'll let some of these younger these younger kids with some really good ideas throw their hat in the ring. And and I had a chance to um to be on a conference call with a number of people that you brought together. And I, I was just honestly really impressed, not just by the the number of businesses, but just the contact and the context through which you provided that Zoom call last week. I mean, you had you had a gentleman from Arkansas that is out doing VC VC investing out in the Bay Area. You had one of the um the pickers, if you will, from Shark Tank on. They provided some I mean, I was just taking notes. I had like four pages worth of notes. So <laughs> so I, I took a lot of notes. But but what caused you guys to to bring this together, this program? So when we came up with the the initial pitch and the idea of Venture Noir, it was always to provide access to opportunities, curriculum, mentorship, capital, just resources as a whole to communities who may not always get access to those or the resources aren't readily available to certain communities or underserved communities. And so from our network, we were able to really just tap into it. A lot of the things I'm doing now right now are really tapping into my network and exposing them to Arkansas, right? Honestly. And I think that's super essential because when I think about my younger self, uh, one of the reasons why I was so eager to leave the place is because I didn't feel that access was right, readily available. And so programs like Pitch Perfect, which what we did last week as a workshop to help companies understand how the importance in the, the how and the importance of pitching their business is a way for us to connect regional, local entrepreneurs to world class resources within our network. And we only hope that our network continues to grow. But that's also something that's very unique to Northwest Arkansas is that you have world class talent that's right there. Right, you have right. the number one company in the world doing business in in Northwest Arkansas, so they have connections and resources throughout. And so you're right in that people working for those corporations within the region are essential to the success of entrepreneurs as well. Right, they become great talent, they become great mentors, they become buyers and customers. So they have an incredible assets to provide. And so what we're doing is from a programmatic standpoint, by way of Venture Noir, it's just creating a series of events and activations to support the growth and development of underserved entrepreneurs. And so the big pitch actually came in response to COVID as a way for us to push some money into the community and also recognize that there are entrepreneurs of color doing good business in Arkansas. And so when we looked at the stats that came out about the PPE investment, PPP uh, stimulus, COVID stimulus uh, support resources that were invested and awarded to companies, the black and brown award was low, right? You're talking about 5% or less went to black and brown entrepreneurs and, you know, 12%, only 12% of those awarded got what they asked for, right? So there, there's a lack of support that went into the community. And so we just honestly, responded with what we can control. We were already on track to do a pitch competition. It was initially going to be an an innovation pitch competition to recruit companies to the region. But with everything going on with the pandemic, we decided to shift that model a little bit, launch the big pitch as a way to talk about businesses doing good business in Arkansas, recognize them and and, and provide some capital in their hands. So we're only doing $30,000 this year, or at least this first round. I hope um, that that increases and that this becomes something that we can do continuously. But I really, more than anything, wanted to stimulate conversation about the investment into black and brown entrepreneurs during this time. Yeah, no, I I love that. And as I was looking through, I was kind of looking back at my notes. And I mean, you had what's Ernest's last name? Ernest Sweat from Ernest Great Point Sweat. Ventures. Yeah, Great Point Ventures. And he's originally from Arkansas. And I mean, he just dropped some knowledge about you know, dealing with if you're going to if you're going to go after VC money, how to go about it with the difference between VC money and private equity and the different options that are out there available to you. I personally am not one that likes to give up much ownership. So I prefer to look for alternative ways of investment. But I sure. mean, I, I, I just think that that's really good. And I think Brandon Andrews, right, is yeah. is uh, the gentleman from Shark Tank. And he had some really, really great ideas about a, about bringing your A game to your pitch, making sure that you can own it. And we actually had several people that are participating in this go do a dry run of their pitch, which I think is helpful because this is the kind of thing where you you don't write this up and then just go do it in front of an audience. You have to practice this. As, as a matter of fact, and, and correct me if you think I'm wrong, but 
I believe that a, 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 a pitch needs to be, it just needs to come off your tongue naturally as if it's second nature. Am I right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I just think it's good. So it was really great to see them participate. And we actually have had a guest, one of your honorable mentions was Big Box Karaoke, and they were a guest here on the podcast. I am Northwest Arkansas, and I'm actually going to uh, go through this whole list of folks. Eventually, I'm actually I'm going to try to connect with most of these folks and get them on the podcast at some point in time. That's and awesome. Sher- the, the founder of Oculogics is coming on. She's actually going to, uh, we're, we're meeting on Friday, and I'm doing a podcast with her. So there's just, a, I mean, there's just a lot That's happening. Awesome. Yeah, there's just a lot happening here in Northwest Arkansas, and there's some really really good ideas. I think there's a lot of people that are just sitting on the sidelines and sometimes either they don't know about things like this or they don't think there are people out there that can actually help them through the process. Would you agree? Yeah, no, I think I, I agree with both. I think people awareness is definitely an issue. Man, I think Northwest Arkansas is a place where you can get comfortable really easily, right? If you get the job you want, stay mm-hmm. within the company you want, you can, you know, make good money, take care of your family and get into a level of comfort that is next to sign you and, and it makes you happy. The opportunity though, as the region is growing so fast, is to pull, is for uh, to be disruptive, right? To bring innovation to the region, to really make North Wales Oxide destination for innovation, right? With those corporate leaders being there. Oftentimes they're sourcing, from my experience, they're sourcing innovation in other places, right? On the coast, East and West Coast and Silicon Valley, New York, things like that, uh, even internationally. And so how do we drive the region to be, again, a destination where they can find true innovation, where you can find uh, true innovative solutions, where you have outstanding talent that's there and ready to go and doing good business, doing big business as well, uh, and, and finding success doing that. And so, yeah, I think what's, it, what I would love to see over time, more people get engaged in, in this in, in this community, lending a hand. I would love to see more talent coming from the corporations because they've been trained for years, right? And supporting, you know, new innovative solutions and also seeing more people come from other regions, even across the state of Arkansas, well, across the nation and even internationally to Northwest Arkansas for this purpose, right? To come and do business here, to create a life here and try to kind of join the growth in, uh, of the community and the culture that's building there. I think they've done, already done a great job with the arts community mm-hmm. and creating a destination out of that. And now we are still working to create the same assets for entrepreneurs and all entrepreneurs and make sure they feel welcome and belong there. Yeah. It's almost like we need a momentary for entrepreneurs. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, <laughs> you know, when I think about it, cause it's like, cause you know, when you think about it, you got Crystal Bridges, which to me, I mean, I've been all over the world. Crystal Bridges is one of the finest art galleries in the world, period. Absolutely. And then you've got the momentary, which is kind of like a playground for artists, a playground for creatives. And it and, and if it, it, it's almost like man, okay, well now we not need to create a momentary for entrepreneurs where they can kind of fine tune their craft, kind of doing what they're doing with the big pitch competition and and what so many other programs are doing. Because you're absolutely right, there is an embarrassment of riches when it comes to resources here in Northwest Arkansas. You've got the Sam Walton School of, it, of Business. You've got a bunch of innovation programs that are going on. And I'm drawing a blank right now, but what's the basketball players? Um, he's got the um, right there on. Uh, uh, um, it's killing me now. It's the, right down the from Brewer Hub. Yes, the yes, the, the Ronnie Brewer Hub of Innovation. Uh, there's so many good things happening there. And were you going to say something? I was going to say the Brewer Hub is actually operated by the university, right? And so right. It, yeah, from from the, uh, it's Ronnie Brewer is not not running it, but the Brewer name is yes. connected to it. But that's it, the university's entrepreneur program is housed there. Yeah, well, and and he's a perfect example of what we see a lot, which is that the people that have some success here in Northwest Arkansas tend to give back to this community, whether you're operating from a nonprofit perspective or a for-profit perspective. There is a lot of opportunity for you to tap into the knowledge and the success that this area has achieved, both on the biggest of biggest stages, as well as the medium stages and even the smaller stages. And there's all kinds of opportunity for you to expand. And to me, it's better or easier, I would say, to try to do it in a place like this than, I mean, where you could go to New York or you could go to Boston and and you could get eaten up. And it's not to say that you couldn't make it there, but you have a much better shot of connecting with the people that are actually moving and shaking at the same time. And that's, I think therein lies the difference. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think there is much less noise here for sure. 
than you'll find in other places. But I also wouldn't say it's necessarily easier because you, the successful entrepreneurs here are, uh, have been traditionally great business operators, right? right? And so how they look at operations here where you may go to the coast and get an idea off the ground here, that's not, it's, 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 uh, the chances of that are slim to none because there is a heavy focus on operation and how you're able to operationalize your business before you even get the, the support and investment that you need. But that's a, that's a good thing. That means that, that you have, here's the opportunity to really build again, good businesses here and coupled with the success of the corporations that are, that are here in the region as well. Yeah. I mean, and all that says is that if you're going to build something, you're going to build it right the first time. Absolutely. And, and, you know, like they say, if you're going to build a building, you start with a solid foundation. And if you don't have a solid foundation, which sometimes businesses are, you know, are missing out, uh, whether it's accounting or whether it's marketing or some other facet that that just comes up a little short, all of your results and the outcomes will show because of that. So, you know, you have to be really, really mindful of that. So do you think, and, and how are your teammates on Venture Noir, because I, you know, I'm looking at the website, and that's at VentureNoir.org. But I'm I'm looking at all these beautiful people here, and 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 they they they're doing a lot of different things all over the place. But what, how have you guys just decided? Hey, we're going to focus in different parts of the country and see what we can do to make some things happen. We're still figuring all of that out. You know, I think connectivity is one of the, one of the things that we are focused on. Make sure that we're getting. Northwest Arkansas and other regions that we have connectivity in connect to each other. So the exchange of resources is kind of where things are going. But make sure that, you know, I'm on the ground in Northwest Arkansas and the rest of my team is, you know, all over the country doing mm-hmm. good work. Everybody still is demonstrating a commitment to this space and, and bringing forth resources. And so being on the ground in Northwest Arkansas is uh, super important to get ingrained into the community and connected uh, to, you know, resources like yourself as well as understanding where the talent is, you know, and creating more conversations about inclusive innovation. You know, the ecosystem was already moving before Venture Noir got here. And so our role right now is to make sure that inclusion is built into the foundation of where things are going and make sure that you have opportunity as well as representation of founders of color and, and from different geographic backgrounds, as well as gender breakdowns um, represented within the growth and success of this, of this place. And so that's what, that's the work that, you know, that we're doing and, and you know, I'm focused on right now is building that community, organizing those resources and, and structuring, you know, programs and opportunities for entrepreneurs to really find success. You know, it, the, the, it's a lot of things that you, we are fighting against, right? You know, the number one reason why a startup in, in fails is because it implodes, right? Because right. It, it, it fails from the inside, right? And so that leadership development is essential. And so the one thing we do know is that the corporations have great training programs and mentorship opportunities. And so bringing some of that institutional knowledge out into the entrepreneurial ecosystem is essential. And those are the kind of things that we're really trying to cultivate and build community around and organize resources to where and, and an entrepreneur in any stage, whether they're corporate, professional now or a student or somebody in another region that has an idea that they can actually look towards uh, what's going on in Northwest Arkansas and find opportunity to build and um, go full force in entrepreneurship. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And, and you know, I, I think I think now more than ever before is the best time for people of color and, and minorities and women to start businesses and to get Absolutely. out there and, and, uh, and to try things. I know I've, I've actually even used some of this quote unquote downtime that we've had with this coronavirus pandemic to try out and test some different things that I, I didn't think I had time to do before. And now it's, it's opened up a whole new world of opportunities. And I'm, I'm really thankful for that. What else after the big pitch are you guys working on? Or is there, are there other things that people should be looking out for that are, are going to come from Venture Noir in the near future? Absolutely. So we have um, a, a lot more things that we're working on. The big pitch is uh, coming up. It's going to be this Thursday, putting some money into the community. But we have an initiative to take enable small businesses. One of the things that we found now here is that a lot of the, our entrepreneurs are traditional business owners, right? Some are, are new, but some have been in business for 20 years, found success and been uh, doing their business a certain way. And so they haven't innovated their business practices, right? By onboarding some technical solutions. And so our next workshop is called Power Me. It's all about empowering the minority entrepreneurs. 
and providing them with the technical assistance and resources they need to operate more effectively and efficiently within their business. And so we're excited about that. Later in the summer, we have a minority business exchange. It's all to be about deal flow and connecting with opportunities to do business with uh, corporations and you know government institutions and, and others that are sourcing solutions. And so we're going to identify those solutions and present them to corporate uh, to some buyers for opportunities to do actually deal flow, stimulate deal flow here. I mean, in addition to that, we'll have a digital conference connected to the Minority Business Exchange, which is all about highlight, highlighting resources in different areas. And so we're working on partnerships with different cities like Houston and Cincinnati and, you know, Canadian markets to where we can uh, share resources across lines, across borders to where we can say, hey, what are the resources that you have for minorities or um, in the African-American and brown communities? And how can we share those? Right. Can we exchange deal flow is, you know, maybe your business doesn't uh, business doesn't move to Northwest Arkansas, but then maybe they open an office here and they find opportunities here and they're hiring here. And we that's that's good too, right? We just want to make sure there's a, a a place for inclusiveness and entrepreneurship when it comes to you know being built and the rest of Northwest Arkansas. Yeah. No. Well, hey, listen, I I say it all the time. Uh, this is, I mean, it doesn't that this ground is it could you couldn't have more fertile ground than you do in Northwest Arkansas uh, mm-hmm. in terms of opportunity. And you know that. I mean, that's why Sam Walton came here so many years ago and ultimately built what they built at Walmart and. And that's an example on the large side of it. But even on the small side, even if you're just doing a half a million or a million dollar startup and, and, and getting some things off the ground, this is a great place to set yourself up for success. Because not only do you have some great resources here, but there's also some actually some pretty solid human resources here, meaning people that if you need to build a good quality team. This is a way, this is a place where you can do that. And if you need to attract some people, because um, I believe that, you know, with this whole pandemic, we're realizing that most of us could still, most of us in most situations could work from home and get away with it. But mm-hmm. even, even, if, even if not, if you had to get some people to move and up and relocate, I could think of worse places to come than Northwest Arkansas. So I think there's a, there's a lot to be offered in this area. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I, I echo that. I think, you know, Northwest Arkansas, one of the places that uh, continues to rise even through re- recessions and, <laughs> the, you know, keep a stable economy. And so that speaks a lot to the wealth in the region and the ability to do, again, good, good business. So we just you want to convene that, you know, for, for the most part, we want to be a master convener and facilitator of these re- resources and organizing those tracks, supporting the businesses that are within our portfolio and inviting others to contribute and support uh, the success, uh, you know, inclusive entrepreneurship. Absolutely. I love that. Inclusive entrepreneurship. So, man, Bjorn, I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule to to connect with me. I, I was appreciative of your time last week at that event, and I certainly will be at the um, the pitch competition. I think this episode will come out after that competition, so we'll be sure to link to the people that actually won that event so people listening to the podcast can check them out, check out their businesses. And then also you could check out Bjorn and his team at Venture Noir. That's VentureNoir.org. Bjorn, if people wanted to reach you directly, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, um, I'm on all social media, LinkedIn, Bjorn Simmons, uh, Instagram at BK Simmons, Facebook, all that, all that stuff, BK Simmons. You, my website is BKSimmons.com, personal website, uh, so you can learn more about me and things that I do. But I'm always eager to connect and thank you for providing a platform for me to kind of share my story and what we're doing. I'm super excited to be back in Arkansas doing this work excited to connect and collaborate with more people. And I hope we can, um, and I, it's not that I hope, I know we're going to do some great stuff um, here really soon. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Even even in, even with everything else that's going on in the world, now is the time for us to kind of be helping each other out to advance and, and to realize the dreams that whatever dreams that we have on our heart to do, it's that time to do it. So I really appreciate that. And I'll be sure to put all your contact information on the show notes so people know how to reach out and connect with you. And and uh, again, we really, really appreciate you taking time to speak with us. And thank you so much. And good luck to the competition this week. Um, and keep doing what you're doing. Keep grinding, keep making it happen. And uh, we, we appreciate you more than you know. Uh, thanks, man. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you for what you built. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, folks, there you have it. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. It was great to have Bjorn Simmons on the show. VentureNoir.org is the website for his company. These guys are really doing some great things here in Northwest Arkansas. 
if you are a listener and you are a person of color, you've got a business or a business idea, I h- highly recommend that you connect with Bjorn and his team and at least talk with them and see what uh, what's possible because you don't know unless you open your mouth. So I highly encourage you to do that. That's all that I have for you this week. Another episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. We appreciate our listeners so much. I just want to encourage you. You can find the I Am Northwest Arkansas podcast wherever great podcasts can be found, including Apple, Stitcher, Google Play, you name it, we're there. And as always, our podcast episodes come out every Monday. So if you're looking for something to listen to, to throw into your podcast rotation, take us out on a run with you, take us out on a drive with you, take us out while you walk the dog in case you don't want to talk to your dog on that walk. You can listen to us on the podcast. I'm being funny about that. But anyway, <laughs> you get you get the idea. So come check us out here at IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll be back next week. Peace. We hope you enjoyed this episode of I Am Northwest Arkansas. Check us out each and every week, available anywhere that great podcasts can be found. For show notes or more information on becoming a guest, visit IamNorthwestArkansas.com. We'll see you next week on I Am Northwest Arkansas.